wouldn't go in there if I were you, said the pumpkin. Excuse me? I asked. I really didn't have time for this. I said, I wouldn't go in there if I were you. The pumpkin lowered its voice conspiratorially. She's a witch, you know. I stopped with one foot on the first step. You don't say. My face was even with the pumpkin's. Its toothy grin seemed to jump and lean eerily to one side, and then the other as its candle flickered and danced with the wind. It's true, my lord. I'd swear to it. I smiled. Thanks for the warning. I'll be careful. As you wish. I continued up the steps to the front door, but I didn't knock. Instead, I continued on down the long porch, leaning out backwards over the railing at times to look up at the house. It was a big, gray, Victorian-style house, complete with a small tower on the side. Thick, ivy twisted their way up and around every surface and shadow of the exterior. Below the tower was a small eave, and to the side of that, a trellis attached to the siding. This, I scaled to the eave. From there, I helped myself to a window. I stuck my head in. It was a bedroom. An imp was hovering a few feet above the floor next to the bed, bobbing up and down as it treaded air with its absurdly tiny purple wings and gnawed noisily at its claws. Muffled sounds of merriment drifted up from below. I slipped over the sill, clamped a hand over the imp's mouth, and slapped a rune stamp on its forehead. It squealed and disappeared in a belch of blue smoke. I moved swiftly from room to room, sending the various familiars and watchdogs of the party goers downstairs back to the dark place whence they had been summoned. Here a rune stamp, there a silver hatchet, doused in harpy blood. I cleared the top floor quickly, then crept downstairs. The guests put up more of a fight, but I was never in any real danger. She was powerful. But I had come prepared. I casually tossed two hex bombs into the main room, tucking myself back around the doorframe before the room exploded into the tortured screams of the blistered and the broken. When the fumes cleared, she was still alive. Barely. I approached her slowly, savoring the moment. She tried to crawl away, but kept slipping in the entrails of her guests. Why, Hunter? She cried. Why? We've kept to ourselves. We've done the villagers no harm. You're making a mistake. You misunderstand, I said, tracing a complex weave in the air with my fingers. Flecks of black fire flitted across my eyes, fear took up residence in hers. This is my territory. Then I clenched my fist. She screamed as her bones twisted. Her last moments were particularly messy. <laughs>